Okay, so this video is going to be a really quick demonstration of how to use Source Tree. Um, for those who are not familiar with it, I do recommend using something else like GitHub for Windows. It is easier to use. Source Tree is a little bit more advanced and the advantages are not much more higher. Um, so the basic of Source Tree is one, if you're going to use it, you're going to need some repository. In my case, I've got tons. I've got over 100 plus. Like there's 99 just on here, and then my account's got about 30, 40 on it. Um, you can click New Repository on GitHub to make a new repository. All you gotta do is name it, put the description is, decide if you wanna do public or private. Uh, we don't have private repositories on the thing. Usually you wanna initialize with a readme. So I'm not gonna create one here because I don't wanna add another one. I'm just gonna delete in a few minutes. But say you wanted to clone, say, Volts in here. You can just go clone, copy this. So this is, you wanna copy this URL. Then you go clone.new, put the path in that you want to put in here, and then you select your destination. Uh, I'm going to select my desktop real quick so I can delete this when I'm done. Um, so select the desktop and then you want to name it, say whatever you want to name it. It does not actually matter what the file name is. Source tree will understand where it's at. It uses the destination path to figure it out. There are some advanced options like whatever branch you want to check out. Recursive submodules, no hard line, stuff like that. Um, each of those you don't really need. Um, you can decide what folders you want to put this stuff in. Um, right now it's root folder. There is some pre-selected folders on my list. Um, you can just hit clone and it'll sit there and it'll download it. And it usually takes longer depending on larger repositories. Volts Engine is a bit larger than most of my projects, so it does take a few minutes to download. Uh, still not as long as some of my Unity projects. Those have a ton of files in them, but that's because Unity and things like uh, um, Visual Studios have a lot of extra files that get uploaded, but that downloaded. And if we actually go to my desktop here and dig through the junk, well, it's right there. So it cloned it, put it on there, and you're good to go. Um, it'll put the actual file in here. So right here is Voltage, this is the one we just cloned down. We can look at our log history. So this is the history of everything we've changed. If we want to have add something, um, there's nothing actually add to here. But if I go over to the tabletop game, which I'm working on right now, if you have changes you want to make. Um, you can just click here and then type in some kind of message and let's see, what did I work on here? Um, fixed and you just type in some kind of message and when you make messages for GitHub, they need to be really uh, meaningful. So you need to be able to go like, hey, this is exactly what I did. You don't need to do every single thing you, you change. Like you don't need to say I changed this on line 50 or something like that. But you generalize it like I fixed controls and I added movement. Um, you check mark down here. When you check mark this, it'll automatically push it remote. But they say you didn't uncheck mark. You wanted to do multiple commits. Uh, you can click commit. It'll then have a file status change ready. And you can come up here and hit push. And this will push it to your master. Now I've only got one repository here. Um, if I had more, instead of pushing it to master, I could say I wanted to push it to my development branch. I would put it to something else. That is an option. We'll go ahead and push this up and it'll upload and do this stuff. And you can hit close. Now say somebody made a change to your repository or you made a change on another computer and you wanted to sync it. All you have to do is hit pull. Uh, then you can go, hey, I want to pull it. And then there's some options here. Usually you just need to do commit merge changes immediately. That's the only thing you need to do. If you're more of a vast user, you can then do other options. Personally, I don't know what they all do. I rarely have to use them, but that's all you have to do to use that. There's also the fetch option. Like if you have uh, somebody makes a new branch and you want to add the branch or somebody had some tags they didn't download, you can click fetch and it'll download all those branches for you. So that way they show up in your list. Like if I go to, uh, let's say Voltsinja, Voltsinja does have a couple branches. So it has a development branch. Um, actually, I don't have all of the branches downloaded, but if I hit fetch on here and then I click that, it should show up that there is another branch. Should is the theory, but whatever, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. It's the reason why I also recommend not using Source Tree. Source Tree is a pretty good piece of software for if you need to have this huge hierarchy list of projects like I do. However, when it comes to functionality, it doesn't work that much better than other things, and it has some issues. Like if you notice when I was doing uh, the file status, I switched between log history and back to file status. There's an issue with the refresh on the file status thing, which is an issue. So if you have that, you just need to switch between tabs. If that's not working, then you just restart the software real quick and it should work. If it doesn't work then, then necessarily you need to maybe restart your dev environment and the tool, then restart both of them, and it should work again. If that doesn't work, then you can restart your computer. It's the reason why I don't recommend using this. Uh, Git for Windows works better because you don't have to have advanced knowledge to use it. 
and it still has somewhat of a hierarchy list on the side, although it doesn't have folder options. Uh, but that's that's it on using source tree.